Welcome to Indie Buzz Rocks number two on Instagram. I'm really excited today. I have a very special guest from around the corner who moved down the road. Um, but first, I really want to say happy Valentine's Day to everybody. I got my heart little glasses on there. Hi, Carla. Aw, how are you? So today, we are very lucky to interview Mr. Isaac Irvin, and if you don't know who Isaac Irvin is, he is a Venice staple who started Venice Open Mic Night here in Venice, California, probably about, um, I'm going to say six years ago, maybe five years ago. We need to ask him that question. So, um, hold on a minute. So, if you could just, um, oh, thank you. I was just going to say, if you could just let me know how's the sound. How's, you know, how's everything? I'm so nervous. I get so nervous. <laughs> um, Isaac's supposed to come join me any minute now. But in the meantime, um, I will play for you. What else? I don't know. Um, oh, did you see my mug? It's a little dirty right now. I think I got some coffee spilled on it. <clears throat> but it's got, it's got, um... Any buzz box on it. <laughs> Thank you. Um, what else? How's my hair? Um, I'm trying to celebrate Valentine's Day. So, I'm very excited. I hope you guys are all going to try to celebrate Valentine's Day. It's something that maybe we're supposed to. Oh, there's Johnny. Hey, Johnny. Oh, Johnny, my friend Carla's on there. You, Carlita. You can say hi to her. She lives in Texas. Um, so, nice to see you. Aw, thanks for supporting. It's very cool. Aw, thank you. <laughs> you know how it is. You get so nervous. Mm. So, I dug into my archives last night, and I don't know if you looked at the post. <laughs> Aw, Carla, you're so sweet. Um, I don't know if y'all looked at the post, but this is from Isaac back in 2016 and he did an open mic night at a bar called Larry's in Venice and the guy who's with him is doing a painting portrait of Bob Dylan that's Aldrich Torres and then there you see the lovely Isaac Irvin and if you notice he's got a bunch of guitars in the back which I love because it's Happens to be National Guitar Day. Well, that was yesterday, so. So when I actually saw uh, the video, I was like, let's try to remember where that was. Is that from O'Brien's? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, and, and the cool part is that we have my friend Al, uh, who is doing live painting. Yeah. Let me turn this up a little bit. He's actually painting Bob Dylan. Yeah, so that Bob Dylan that he's painting, he gave it to me for Christmas. Oh, you're really? Yeah, so I have it. I have it in my bedroom. Wow. Um, yeah, it's awesome. It took him a long time to do that because it's all just dots. What do you mean? Like, so he does this um, uh, this trick called pointillism or this art called pointillism where it's just little tiny dots that he's drawing with. So instead of just painting strokes, it's just the the entire thing. If you look at closely, he's just sitting there and it's individual dots. It's crazy. You'll have to um, post a pic for us. 
Yeah, I, I totally can. Um, but that's super cool that you have this because I actually, that's probably one of the only performances of me playing that song and it was called Alive. Wait, you have to repeat that. So sorry, I got sidetracked. Oh, you're Man. fine. <laughs> um, I said that that video is probably uh, one of the only videos I've seen of me playing that song. Oh, you're kidding. No. So I was like, I was, I, when I saw it, I was like, oh, wow, that's actually pretty cool that you got that video. <laughs> wow. I really like it, too. And I find it... Um, quite stunning the timing of it meaning I don't know about you but the virus has been um, mentally and emotionally heart-wrenching I mean besides the physical aspect of it and the, and the physical mental aspects just the internal aspect it's been tough have really come in well and it you know I'll tell you three or four months into it uh, it was kind of like okay is it almost over? And then, and then when you get that realization that it's not going to be over for a long time, then th then things start going crazy in your mind, like, oh crap. <laughs> okay, now, well, when did you realize that? Because I woke up every morning. Every morning, I would wake up and be like, "Is it over yet? Are we done with the virus?" Like I was, you know, I was very um, worried. Yeah, that started a whole slew. It it definitely, um, you know. Let me let me start off by saying hello, and then also that I'm <laughs> I have work being done on my house. So if if you start hearing like uh, saws cutting through and stuff, then I might have to move rooms. But I think it seems all right for right now. We'll just ask them to not cut your head off. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what is that? But, but uh, no, you know, a few months into it, um, it was really kind of confusion and wondering what's going on. Yeah. And then it actually, around March or April, um, a lot of of songs kind of started coming to me, and it and it actually helped me kind of uh, get through the first half of this pandemic. Um, and I did write a lot of tunes. Another thing that was that really helped out was the Venice Open Mic Night, um, which where, you do on screen on Wednesdays. Is that right, or what day do you do them? Yeah. So when when the pandemic hit um, and there was confusion as to when we were going to get back to work and blah blah blah. Um, I think there was like three or four weeks time where I was like, okay, this is not going away. So I should probably look into doing a virtual thing. And, you know, transitioning from uh, live music every single Wednesday night in Venice to no music <laughs> with nobody uh, was pretty tough. And and I'm I'm glad that I transitioned into the virtual space uh, when I did. That being said, we went 27 episodes, 27 weeks with with no break. So every Wednesday, we had a virtual open mic night. And if you think that That's it's you know, tough having a ver having a regular open mic night where people just randomly show up. Um, yeah to play. this you know it taught me you have to branch out you got to see what other people are doing online and i i i went down a bunch of different rabbit holes and found a bunch of different um places where other, <laughs> yeah where other musicians were playing and i was like wow so i'd listen to them and i'm like hey i have this open mic night that i host um and we're now doing it virtually would you guys be open to playing the cool part about that is that now not only were the musicians um, just in Venice, but now I was getting people from the New York area, from Canada, from Washington, from Florida, from all over the place. And that was really cool. Um, yeah, 
it was it was really fun and so i you know you asked me if i wanted to do this interview and just kind of have a talk and stuff and and um, it took me a while to get here didn't it <laughs> yeah <laughs> but but do you actually remember sorry go ahead no 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 go for it i was gonna say do you actually remember when we met i've known you for quite a long time well it was definitely probably eight to ten years ago <laughs> we were i know i know we've been in the venice scene and and you always came to my open mic nights or always came to the gigs that uh, i'd be playing around there and and it's awesome you know it's I'm, really I'm cool so, i'm so grateful for them because i loved going i loved hearing my friends play and people who i didn't know that were just chill local people learning struggling trying and getting that courage uh, the courage to first of all the courage to get up and create an open mic night in the first place is um Im impressive it's the courage is how do you get through that courage you know to follow through on something that really requires other people to like it you know i mean you could do your own self but you know yeah that wasn't um, your, you know boy um so i met you yes um sorry sidetracked no you're I met fine you. um we were at your apartment when you used to live across from pdp uh on um whatever is that market market well i, I live yeah, yeah i lived on rose avenue but i did hang out so i was in a band uh called challenger and it was on westminster my my buddy was the guitar player and i was at his house 90 percent of the time so it was that's okay. probably what you're talking about so that's yeah, where, it, that's yeah, where yeah. it was and i had earmuffs on and I left my earmuffs there. <laughs> Do you remember that now? Oh man, that was a I long remember, time like, ago. I remember, like a month later, I saw you and I was like, "Do you have my earmuffs?" <laughs> <laughs> were they pink? I I was there with like four people. We were there for like maybe four hours, and that was it. Was in some really <laughs> low, funky art studio apartment, and we all sat in really like low, kind of beanbaggy chairs. Or not bean bags, but everything was really low. I remember. Yeah, that that had to have been my guitar player's, uh, my old guitar player's house that we were at, or mean, apartment we were. You mean last year? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right, are you ready for your questions? I got. Yeah, them. yeah. Let's do it. You got all. All right, here we go. All right, let's do it. So first of all, let's just get some foundation questions. Where were you born and raised? Cool. I'm actually from El Paso, Texas. Oh. And um, and my, I lived there for like growing up until I think I was in fifth grade. Um, and then we moved to New Mexico. Ooh, where in New Mexico? In a little city called Ridoso. What was it? Rio Doso. Ah. And it was just a little mountain town. Um, but it was a great place to grow up uh, because we had like the, my brother and I had uh, the Lincoln National Forest as our backyard. So there was not much happening there as when you're little kids. But the cool part is our backyard, we could just hop a fence and we had the entire forest. So we'd, we'd make sandwiches and go out uh -huh. and just hang out in nature uh -huh. all day. And then we'd get back in the afternoon and then it was time for dinner. Um, oh, yeah, it was really cool. That's wonderful. Very and then, cool. And so then, that's yeah, that's, so I would say I was, I was born in, in El Paso, but I was raised in New Mexico because I spent a lot of time there as well. Didn't you see um, any UFOs? So the, the, Funny part is that after we we were in Ridoso, we moved back to El Paso for a few years, and then my parents decided they didn't like that, so you moved to Area we moved 51. back to, so we moved <laughs> back to New Mexico, but this time to Roswell, New Mexico, and that's oh, where did. yeah that's where I went to high school actually. So um, did you see any aliens? The <laughs> the only aliens that are in Roswell are the aliens that live there. <laughs> uh, There's everybody, 
everybody uh, there when I lived there, the whole alien thing wasn't that big. It wasn't until I graduated high school and left that it was their the 45th anniversary or 50th anniversary of the whole UFO. Yeah, it was the 50th anniversary. Wow. Um, and then Roswell, like, they Blew fixed up. up the town and then it became all about aliens. Now, have you read the new alien things that were, um, hey, Vicky, the things that were um, um, recently disclosed? Apparently, they disclosed a bunch of UFO papers, and I have not read them yet. No, but I, I do. I am an avid fan of uh, watching, like, the Blue Book Chronicles and stuff like that on TV. So. Do you watch the ancient, have you seen Ancient Aliens? No. Nope. But I, oh, I do exactly. I do enjoy watching that kind of stuff only because every time someone someone finds out that I'm from Roswell, they ask me immediately, question one is, have you seen an alien? <laughs> I mean, I want to go. It's, <laughs> well, we, were gonna make, we will make it there. Yeah, it's um, a fun it's a fun town. Put ancient aliens down on your on your binge watching. It's um, <laughs> historical. It's so it's historic architecture, arts and crafts, all those adobes and dolls and things and windows and how you get to it, portals and all but it's so it's based on history oh it's interesting watch it. it's really cool anyway cool. back to you <laughs> <laughs> how did you fall in love with music well i'll well, i'll tell you i grew up around music my dad uh was a musician oh, everyone on my dad's side like my uncles and stuff play guitar so there was always uh, people over at our house playing music or if yeah so they're playing music when I was small uh, like younger I would always ask my dad hey dad can you show me how to play these chords and so he'd write them down on a napkin you know like a sharpie and a napkin like G C D oh. and he would, he would uh, leave them there and then we cool. you know we were interested, my brother and I were interested in playing for about a day or two. And then we're like, this is too hard. <laughs> this is too much. So then we stopped. <laughs> and then you know, a few months later, we're here we come again. Hey, Dad, can you write down those chords for us again? And he'd so what, write them down on a napkin again. What were you doing in between time while you were um, just being a kid, just being a punk? <laughs> were you guys practicing what he told you to? So what? it wasn't until we actually, um, we got an electric guitar for Christmas. My favorite. And my brother and I found it easier to play on the electric than on the acoustic. So we started playing um, and we had a few songs that we would, you know, we were kind of writing Ooh. and, and, you know, you're a little kid. And you know you don't know what what's going on, but we tried. We were we were getting into it a lot, um, and then at this point, anytime we would have company come over to our house, my dad would be like, "Hey, Glenn and Isaac, come entertain." <laughs> and then it was like boom, and they put us in the middle of the the living room, and here's all these you know strangers or or, you know, just random people. When you're a little kid, it's just like, oh, I, come on, dad. Like, oh, we have you to do loved this? it. You loved and, it. <laughs> and so I think, you know, out of that, it, it actually trained us to perform in front of people. And that's not to say that I don't get nervous every single time that I perform, because I do. But oh, it kind of takes away, it, it you know, it, it was the icebreaker for sure. Well, you probably didn't have much time to be nervous when you were younger because you probably just like went and did it real fast and then ran to the back. Yeah, and I, and I think the, <laughs> there was that kind of no fear attitude yeah. when you're younger. You're like, I don't care. You don't have anything to lose. You don't need, you know, right. it doesn't matter. Like, all right, cool. If you mess thing. up, it doesn't matter. Who cares? Yeah. Um, Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Isn't so that interesting? So now, do, it, it, um, your your so the guys in your family played music. Is that how, did they teach you um, how to speak and write and sing in Mexican or Spanish? Sorry. So that actually. Do you have any family from Mexico? Is what I was trying to say, and I'm yeah, yeah, yeah. together. <laughs> yeah. So so where that all came to play is my mom is from Mexico, 
Okay. And, and so indirectly growing up, I learned Spanish only because my mom only spoke Spanish to us. My. So she would talk to us in Spanish and we would reply in English. But we knew how to talk. Well, she would send us to our grandma's house in Mexico for the whole summer. And oh. we would just be there, little kids. I remember walking, you know, out of the bus and looking around going, what are all these people saying? Like, I looked at my brother going, I don't understand anything. <laughs> how, how old were you? Um, we were young. I, it, it was probably anywhere between five to eight years old. That would make sense. That would make sense, especially if you're like, big eyed and seeing yeah just like what is going on and then i remember going home that summer and knowing spanish just like oh, really? it clicked yeah so you were definitely probably seven or or, or eight yeah yeah wow. and and That's so, smarty so i've kind of i've kind of carried that through my entire life with me and i never really flex that you know knowing spanish that much um Unless, you know, you're in situations where the other person you're talking to only speaks Spanish. You're like, hey, you start talking to them. It's like, hey, yo entiendo español. ¿Quieres hablar en español? And they're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. ¿Y por qué you, yeah. And, and they're, so they're kind of always thrown back because they're like, hey, how does this guy know how to speak Spanish? And so it was kind of that growing up. Um, but it wasn't until my brother started playing this song and actually it's a song that i played at open mic night like every every wednesday night and it was the buena vista social club um it was called el cuarto de tula and and he, i heard him playing it and i'm like dude that is an awesome song and find it el cuarto de tuyo tula tula yeah. And, and so I saw that he was playing it and I'm like, man, that sounds really cool. So I, I picked it up and I started playing it. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and I think that was probably the very first time that I seriously was thinking I should probably sing in Spanish, do, do a few songs in Spanish, because the reaction that I got when I play it, people were like, oh, you know, they were really excited about it. Well, I, kinda, have, I yeah, do yeah. have somewhere footage of you playing. And um, unfortunately, I could not get my computer and myself organized to find it because I have to scroll through footage I did not properly label. <laughs> um so all good yeah i'll get there though i will find it i will find it i will post it yeah so worst case you just edit it left. in sorry go ahead yeah worst case you just throw throw some video clips in an edit well you know now that's a big wham well, i'll figure that out i'll try <laughs> i'll try um what was the first song you did learn to sing then wow was it El Cuarto That's a, Tuyo, Tula? Well, that was the first Mexican or Spanish, Spanish song, Tula. yeah. Um, the, I'm trying to think the very first English song that I, I learned how to play was probably like a Garth Brooks song. Because my dad, yeah, my dad's Lots like- a little country. Yeah, my dad is full on country. And my mom is full on Mexican. So then that's kind of, I, you know, oh. I'm kind of, so I started out playing country music because it was the easiest to learn on guitar. Oh, is it? Or it was? Well, there's three chords pretty much to 99% of country songs. <laughs> so, so I found it like easy to, and that's all my dad would play. So if he, if he was um, entertaining and playing music, and he'd have us kind of backing him up. So we learned how to follow him and play the chords. So it was easier for me to sing country stuff because I'd always play alongside my dad. What um, Garth Brooks song was it? Do you happen to remember? So, yep, it was The Dance. 
Do you happen to remember how to, can you sing it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I went, and I'll even show you, just oh. real quick, I'll even wow. show you how, how it was, um, how I, I, I was, let's see if we can get the whole guitar in, in frame. Let's back up. When I, back when I was trying to learn how to play it, it was like this. And then I'd go, looking back. And then it'd take me five minutes to get like, position my fingers on the memory of, and then position, position, position. The dance we shared, and then back to G. You know, so it was a super slow, it. super slow process. Um, sorry, out of the frame. It was a super slow process, and that's kind of how it is, you know, when you start something new, it's hard. But if you love it enough, you learn how to do it. And Perseverance. that's, you know, and um, courage. And, when you're younger, it's much easier, you know? <laughs> when you Throw get older- me back 10 years while we're in this virus thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, when you're older, for whatever reason, it gets harder and harder to do that. Uh, it's a little thing called stubborn, um, <laughs> and I can't figure this out now, forget it. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. What, um, now, did your father choose that song for you to learn, or did you choose choose it or how did you come about with that i just liked it like for whatever reason it was a song i don't i don't even think my dad did a version of it um it was it was the fact that i was like okay i can follow along now with my dad and this song is the same chords as what my dad is playing so let's you know try to learn that so you knew that smart yeah. pants Smarty, smarty hat. So what kind of music did your dad play? He played pure country and your mom played pure. Um, like yeah, just, just my mom would play. And it's funny because now um, when I play live, uh, there are songs that, that we had listened to growing up on my, you know, at my grandma's house that are Spanish songs or Mexican bands that played music. And Sometimes I feel And then, so when I wanted to start singing in Spanish, I'm like, well, what songs can I sing? Because this is now not a genre that I've listened to, I haven't listened to in the last, you know, 25 years yeah. or whatever. Right. So then I went back to what I knew. And it was these bands that from the 80s that, that we used to listen to. And then I was like, oh, I'm just gonna learn how to play that song. And and that that's kind of what got me and and you know i will let you know that all up until i moved to venice i was always i i there was a problem like i was in a bubble and it was hard for me to get out and 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 play my music comfortably um without freaking out or without you know you telling your mind a million things of why you can't do it. Venice helped me get out of that bubble. And um, a lot of people doing the same thing, struggling with their art to just keep going. And that is yeah, and, anything. And, uh, you know, it was nights like you were talking about that we first met where you're, you're hanging out with people and you play a song and people react well to it. And you're like, damn, that's, that's kind of a, it was a different feeling that I felt in Venice compared to anywhere else that I had felt. Um, and it helped me out personally so that I could uh, like, I mean, it, it eventually what ended up happening was now I reco have recorded a bunch of Spanish songs. I have new material that I'm currently working on, some of which are my dad's old songs that he wrote. Oh. And um, Do you want to share one with us? Sure. Um, this song, I actually, my dad wrote this song 35 years ago. Oh my god. And goodness. it was very, um, you know, it was, it was a country song, but it was 
35 years old, or maybe it's older than that. Um, and I recently took a, a, singing, a, a singing class. Yes. And at the end of the singing class, we were to do a, a project and um, or for a final project or whatever. And I felt like I connected with this song so well because I grew up with it my entire life. Um, and I, uh, one of the classmates that I had said, why don't you try doing that song, but do it your own style? Like, right. and you know, not in the style of your dad, do it your own way. Right. I found that very challenging to be honest with you because A, it's your dad is, you know, that's his song. But I did want to kind of modernize it a bit. And so I've, I've only played the song. I've never played this live. I've recorded it, uh, like the initial version of it. Um, and I think, let's look at a calendar. I actually have. I saw it on Facebook like a week and a half ago. Maybe. Yeah. So. Um, I saw your son posted his version and then he posted your version. I thought that was cute. Yeah, so he's actually mixing the whole song for me. He's oh. an awesome sound engineer. Oh, and cool. um, we're, we're laying down the drums on Monday. Oh, I have a drummer. And, <laughs> and then next week, we're going to lay down the bass and the guitar. So I'm aiming for end of February to release the single um, oh, yes. of this song. Uh, that's originally my dad's song, but I'll play you guys a little, a little bit of it. Oh, how Since, lucky uh, you. Yeah, happy, this... happy Valentine's Day. Yeah, thank you. Valentine's right. Day. Let's see how this sounds. Her hair was black and her eyes were Eyes are sparkling blue. Woo! She was more of a city. City things she liked to do. Your taste is country. And I'm country too. There's more to it, but I, you know, I don't want to ruin the entire surprise. Oh, um, no, if everybody wants don't. to, you know, um, we'll, we'll come back. I'm, I'm releasing it. It'll probably like I'm finishing the song uh, probably before the end of February and I'll start promoting it the first couple weeks of March. Um, and I already have other songs that I'm working on, which is really cool, which is a perfect, perfect timing that you hit me up for this interview. Oh. Because, you know, you're all, it's always like, okay, I'm going to finish this song and then I'll do this and then I'll, I'll start branching out and trying to do interviews or whatever to promote. But why not do it now? Well, <laughs> Get the word out. Well, not only that, but not only that, if you, you know, if you think about it, this like the timing of that song is beautiful. I mean, what we're going through in our society is um, stressing love out. <laughs> it's stressing love out of the picture is what it's doing. Um, everybody has their backs up. Everybody has their, um, I'm the brainiac of the group. So, you know, you better just keep your brain quiet. You know, everybody has this thing going on in their own mannerisms, in their own version of it, because yeah. we're so 
forced to we're forced to go around and around so you're you're just bringing that love and bringing the idea of of that beautifulness you know that surrounds yes those memories yes that love yes the you know that little moment you know that i will never forget fills so we no yeah. longer have to carry so much animosity it kind of pushes it out of the way so it's beautiful timing it's a yeah it's definitely a a great um uh, way to to ease your mind from all of the crap that's been going on the last year <laughs> oh it's a show it's all fun <laughs> no <nothing's laughs> it's all good it's all love yeah i've been um but anyways maybe not so um what was the first love song or shall i say did you ever write a love song and what was the first love song you wrote i'm gonna guess you already will because you're all lovey the first love song yeah. that's a good question oh thank um you. Wait. no uh, just kidding <laughs> actually my brother and i we wrote a song when we were young probably in like 13 maybe god let this this you just racked my brain so much. But let, I, I actually, game. now now that you got me thinking about it, I want to, if I can play it. Actually, so the first song I ever learned on guitar was this. I know that. <laughs> and that gave me confidence to start start kind of playing the blues. So it was like... you kind of get into you know so but before we we got into uh doing that crazy stuff i think the first song that my brother and i wrote love song was um god it was something like I met a girl, she had it all. We were having fun, thought she was the one. Then I thought of you, it all turned blue. I thought of you, another chorus went. <laughs> it was more of a that's a country love song for sure yeah that's yeah country, and it's, it was i'm sitting there that, thinking how did we come up with this when we were 13 years old <laughs> you just you just movies and tv shows and um daytime yeah, drama <laughs> just channeling channeling it somehow what but um, that was the first song i can't believe i, I love that. it i can't believe you remembered <laughs> it that's an impressive memory and it's definitely a country love song, you know, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was straight. I love it, though. You got to yeah, have thank it. You. Um, are you ready for your next question? I'm ready. What is the very first concert that you saw? Live, obviously. Oh, man. So. I think your phone the... is freezing a little bit. Am I free? Yeah, there might be a wire. Just kind of slide it to the side because it was fine earlier. Let's hope that fixes it. How go. about now? Perfect. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Um, okay. So. What is your first concert that you saw? First big concert was in 1994. <laughs> I saw the Smashing Pumpkins on their Ooh. Siamese Dream Tour. Ooh, where did they play? Lubbock, Texas. Oh, another yeah. country favorite. So that was uh, that was about three hours from Roswell, New Mexico. 
So that was like one of the major cities that you had ah. to travel to. Oh, um, that's and not so major at all. I know, right? <laughs> 200,000 people. <laughs> oh, really? That's bigger than I thought. Yeah. Um, it, it may have been like 150 to 200, but the other closest uh, largest city around there would be Albuquerque, but that was, it's, a, it's about the same distance, three hours from where I was at. Um, uh, did you buy a t-shirt at Smashing Pumpkins concert? Yes, but I, I, st I, st I don't have it still, which is horrible. <laughs> I learned, I learned way later in life that you should keep those kind of things. <laughs> I actually almost wore one of my concert t-shirts today, but I was like, it's Valentine's Day. I'm wearing Valentine's Day stuff. You gotta yeah, I should have worn, I should have worn some red. I, I got it. I got you covered. Um, that's very cool. Oh, okay. I got that one. Well, maybe not. I mean, wait, uh -huh. we might've done that one. Um, okay. Ooh. Do, would you like to share with us one of your earliest childhood memories? All right, man, you're going back into the archive. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm hoping something pops up. It doesn't have to be like, uh, you know, earliest really, childhood like when you were born. <laughs> just, just, sometimes like little baby, like, you know, something that was like an early childhood memory. Well, I do remember, you know, and this was like I was telling you, I was somewhere between five and eight years old. And, and I remember our grandma in Mexico handing us, a, you know, a shopping list. And I remember walking to the grocery store and looking at this list and everything's written in Spanish. <laughs> so then, you know, it's up to you to figure out how, you know, like what that is and to take it home to grandma. <laughs> so we'd be walking around, you know, of course you're like, okay, tortillas, I, I know that one. So then let's get the tortillas. But um, yeah, I would say that, memory sticks into my mind probably because we physically had a list of something you know that you were out searching for so I can vividly remember seeing that note with all of my grandma's handwriting of, of all the of all the stuff yeah so that was kind of cool she knew what she was doing <laughs> yeah she taught us she taught us well <laughs> um so um, what is the most exciting time that you've had as a musician? Oh, that one's an easy one. <laughs> <laughs> the, I think the best time I've ever had was when my band Los Pochos, um, who's me, Michael Yost from Venice, Rick Boston Venice from TV. Los Angeles, and we went to Germany, uh, for 18 days, I think it was. Wow. And we, and Michael Yost, he's from, he's from Germany. Yeah. So um, with the help of his friends in Germany, we, we arrived in Germany. We had a day to kind of decompress and get our jet lag kind of taken care of. And then the next day for two and a half weeks straight, we had a gig like every wow. every night at a different place and it and all around germany it was so awesome and, what and there was, was this do you remember uh this like three years ago oh yeah I, you know i kind of remember that yeah oh and so it was you michael yost and who was the other guy? Uh, rick boston okay yeah uh, so so he cool yeah we we had a whole list of all the places we were supposed to go and one of them was at an ice cream shop. And so that was kind of like in the middle toward the end of the little tour that we took. How interesting. And, and me and Rick were giving Michael Yo's shit. We're like, dude, an ice cream shop? Your best really? one ever. By far the coolest place we've ever played at. 
And was so it really an ice cream store? It was a little tiny ice cream shop, probably no bigger than the room that I'm in. Yeah, if anything, smaller than the room that I'm in. Um, and, but the, the deal was that outside, we were playing outside and there was kind of a little seating area, but it was at the center of a plaza in this town. And around, you know, five or 6.30 in the afternoon, like sunsets happening, and you just start hearing people coming toward, there's like streets that all kind of join right. the center of the town. Yeah. So you just see all these people from that local town and from, you know, the surrounding areas walking down those roads and coming and, and there must have been 500 people that showed up in this little ice cream shop. And it was insane. I couldn't believe like it. And the, you know, one one big difference between uh, uh, Europe gigging and United States is nobody pulls their phone out to record you. And so that was kind of weird, but instead they actually all legitimately listen 100%. Oh. They turn everything off and they sit down and oh. enjoy the show. Isn't that so, precious? So it, we were blown away and, and honestly, you know, we, there were some gigs where we, um, we were just playing, like we didn't even, we just left the tip jar out. We didn't care. There's other places not. that booked us <laughs> yeah. and they'd pay. But this place was one of those that have just like, we weren't going to get paid for it. And we passed around the tip jar and probably made more money on that one um, gig than the entire gig, put, you know, entire oh. dates put together, the whole thing. Wow. And sold Drop so many t-shirts and stickers. And they, that's another good thing is they buy everything. If they like you and they like the performance, they'll buy all of your merchandise. Well, Michael Yost is very famous there. He is I super mean, he's famous. famous here too, but I mean, that's his hometown. Yep. Yeah, they love him over there. It's oh, cool. What a sweet thing. I love that. You know, going to the ice cream store, and especially in those plazas in Europe, they're big, big squares of, of cement. And then, as you said, all the streets come in and all the buildings around it. But, you know, those squares are so, or the palazzas. Yeah, it's uh, awesome. Hot plazas. Yep. How beautiful. What a great memory. Aren't you a lucky little one? All right, are you ready for your next question, Mr. Ice yep. Cream Man, tour boy? <laughs> <laughs> what, are, uh, what are your top three karaoke songs that you like to sing? Nice. Well, oh, man. Rick Astley, Never Gonna Give You Up is a good one. There was, I used to do Steve Miller band, The Joker. That's a fun one. <laughs> and then, Down and then, the um, face, cowboy. <laughs> you know, there's one that now that, um, that I heard that I have a song that I heard that I haven't heard in like 20 years oh. and and when I heard it I was like I was like man I totally remember this song and that I I really liked it when it came out and the the artist is John Cicada oh. I don't know if you do you, I don't know if you remember him but the song is called just another day and okay. and so when karaoke like gets back in action I'm gonna sing that song in karaoke because it's it's actually yeah it's a, it's in a good range and the guy's like um, he's a Latin singer um, so I don't know that's I I that's usually too. leave the karaoke uh, to my wife Molly um, and I have a video of you singing Happy Birthday to her mom I can't I oh. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, I, you know, I enjoy karaoke a lot, but 
I try to I try to leave it to the the karaoke pros. <laughs> uh, you like, well, open mic night is very close to karaoke, except for yeah, yeah. Song. yeah. <laughs> I agree. Okay. Um, okay. Um, is there a song that you sing in the shower? Ooh, it changes day by day. Oh, I love <laughs> singing in the shower. Huh? Um, you know, I'm not even gonna to lie to you. This morning, I woke up singing a Dua Lipa, Dua Lipa song because. So here's <laughs> here's how this stuff works. Um, uh, my wife Molly, she listens to kind of pop top forty most all the time. So indirectly, I just pick up on all these songs that she's. Um, Bopping around the house. That she plays, but I think the the reason why I, I was singing that song in the shower is because it, to me, sounds almost identical to um, In Excess, Need You Tonight. Oh, so what so song is that? They have a guitar <laughs> riff that sounds exactly like that. I have no idea uh, what the oh. name of that song <laughs> is. Because I don't listen to... Molly! Uh, uh, let's see. Oh, it's called Break My Heart is the, the Dua Lipa song. And it's funny because I just typed in Dua Lipa uh, in excess because it, it sounds almost identical. But I wow. think she actually did get give them a writing credit on her song, which is good. So, um, oh, okay. Yeah, because there's, yeah. So I sing random I things. In, I sing I random guess. songs in the shower, but I do sing in the shower like, almost every day. I like <laughs> good. That's good. That's awesome. Um, what is the? Um, okay, are you ready for something deep right now? Let's do a little it. more. A little more deep question ready to go in there get yeah get a little philosophically speaking is there something that you understand absolutely like uh, yes okay so it and it took a long time to get to this point yeah um okay. i i have found um absolutely mm -hmm. that we are all going to die someday. When you make that realization, it's as simple as that. Like, oh yeah, you know, you can say it, but until you realize it yourself, I think mentally a lot of things start changing. Yes. Um, I think for me, it happened just recently, a couple years ago and yeah, this, it changes your state of mind. What a happened lot. a couple year ago, years ago that um, made that happen for you? Or kind of like hit you that you're no longer a teenager that's invincible and can eat Snicker bars and French fries for your whole life? <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it was, it, it obviously uh, had to do with, I went to the eye doctor and the eye doctor was like, are you stressed out? <laughs> And I'm like, what's going on? Is this a commercial? Hi, I'm your eye doctor. Are you a little stressed yeah, out? Yeah, yeah. Are you stressing out? out? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I'm stressing out a lot. Um, but it wasn't until that moment that I found something like, hey, something's wrong with you. And, and you need to do something about it or else this, you know? And, and, at that point, it you know you connect the dots yeah. to where you're like, dude, I need to start. I need to start taking care of myself because we can't we can't live forever. And although if you do take care of yourself, you know you can prolong that that life. Well, or you that, prolong that the inevitable pain of your of things. Yeah. Hurting. So, so um, yeah, I would say that was probably my my biggest realization in life 
is that one day we were all not going to be here. So you might as well enjoy it. And you might as well treat people with kindness. And, um, you know, a lot of things start kind of opening up in your mind when you when you realize that. Yeah, so there's no you're, you're no longer invincible when you fall, it hurts harder when you, yeah. you know, you don't have the recovery of going back. Exactly. Um, but that's what I was gonna ask you, I was gonna say what, um, what has that um, awareness or or absolute understanding led you to follow through with in your own life? Like how has cool. it, how has that's, it put that's a really good question. Um, because once you make that conscious click in your mind, or you know, I did, um, then you start looking at okay, we are running out of time. So we need to make the best sitting around, you know. Um, so it's kind of what I'm doing uh, right now. And that's, I, right. I'm, I'm hustling. I'm hustling getting new music out. I'm hustling working with other artists to, to um, you know, collaborate. And, and the day. In, yeah, and just do your best <laughs> in all that you can do. So there's been a lot of that. And, you know, I will mention that my Venice Open Mic Night has been in hiatus for a few months because, yeah. well, after the 27 weeks straight streak, um, I just started to, I decided to just kind of back off. Uh, although during that time I've gotten married I, you know, Congratulations. I, yeah, yeah. I mean, this is all just recent. Now me oh, saying my wife. I it, didn't realize that. Know, yeah, yeah. I, we got married in October. So it's all during COVID. Originally, our wedding date was going to be October 10th. And, um, and, you know, we postponed the actual wedding for later, but we had a small kind of backyard um wedding um i got we got married in pasadena courthouse so that was cool oh beautiful with all the mission tiles and yeah stuff. yeah exactly. congratulations you a lot of your people online carla saying congratulations she's a fellow texan she was oh awesome Go she texas. said hi fellow texan <laughs> hello uh, yeah cool yeah so it wow you know, all of this kind of it, it, it definitely uh, allows you to seize the day every yes. day because you wake up going, hey, it's a new day. We need to kick some ass. Yes. Yeah. You need to. Well, and you have been. I mean, when I saw the <laughs> song that you did online, you took singing lessons. I was a little bit like, how come nobody invited me? You know, like, I was like, what Yeah, no, do? and I'm that's the thing. That. <laughs> yeah, that was my Christmas present, actually, because I, I was like, this I want to I want to do something for myself and I want to, you know, um, kind of take take the time and work on myself. Um, and so that's kind of why I've been in hiatus with the open mic night. But we are um, or I am uh, looking forward to. Uh, the season two of Venice Open Mic Night virtual until we get back live and back to normal. Um, so I'm thinking the date for the season two is going to be uh, a one year anniversary of when I started the quarantine series oh. uh, the first time. So I think it's in probably the end of March, somewhere around there, but you'll start seeing promotions. Uh, Good. online Good. Keep going. on my Keep on my going. instagram yeah no there's tons of musicians that are are out there um i mean they're finding alternative methods to getting their music out there but i yes. do want to continue the platform i just felt this was a good time for me to reflect and recharge especially um and i think i've been doing that
especially I taking the singing class and all you know recording and writing and learning um, learning learning yeah the courage, the courage to learn and the discipline to continue is um now more than ever um prevalent it sort of seems like after you're out of school most of us kind of just kind of quit <clears throat> learning except for a few scragglers on the internet and now it's everybody is and which i love personally yeah no, okay, me too. are you ready for it's your next great. question? Let's do it. All right. If you could have, it's a fun one. If you could have a superpower, what would it be and why? Although it is deep. Don't go like, <laughs> oh, all I want is to look at people's skirts and stuff. <laughs> Sorry. That was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we won't go to that one. But, yeah. uh, <laughs> no. You know, I was, I was, Last week, I was saying, I wish there was a way that it, I could be like the Matrix and where you just just plug in and just download and be like, all right, now well, I can power. do this. Okay, so you want the Matrix superpower. That's what I want. I, I want the Matrix power. superpower. I like that. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, how? that's a good one. So you yeah, just I mean, download everything. Yeah, like, hey, you want to fly a helicopter? And then, out, and then upload Let's it. fly like, the helicopter, you know? I so want How to awesome go. would that be? Can you take me? Because I really want to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah. Wow, I love that. that is, I think that's a really good superpower. Do you have any tattoos? I do. Um, I have... <laughs> I have, and these are going to be really funny. And now, and I will answer it 100% honest. Um, oh. Sorry, my computer just went away. Um, the first tattoo I ever got, so I have three tattoos. Ooh. The first tattoo I ever got, I was 15 years old. Wow. That's I young. was on a choir trip. I used to be in choir oh. at, in high school. Oh. And we were at like a state competition and they let, you know, it's just a bus full of high school teenagers and they let us all out in downtown uh, Albuquerque, New Mexico. I was wondering about Albuquerque. I forgot about that. Yeah. Continue. So <laughs> I'm not even kidding you. I was on a mission when I was 15 that I was gonna get a tattoo. But the problem is that my parents would kill me if they saw that I had a tattoo. So I had to put it somewhere where they're never gonna see it. Where the sun right? don't shine. Exactly. So <laughs> I have it on my upper thigh, right? And and the funniest part about this whole thing is, is um, you, like just the mentality of a 15, 16 year old. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> there was this hot chick, there was this hot, hot girl that was um, in our, in our high school choir wearing a, just a default smiley face t-shirt. Oh, the yellow one? Just the yellow one. And I'm like, I'm totally going to get that as a tattoo. So I went into the tattoo shop and I said, how much would it cost to get it? Like just the default smiley face right here. And the guy's like 50 bucks. And I'm, I'm like, all right. So he didn't even ask my age. That's the mental part about it. <laughs> Is there an age limit for tattoos? Yeah, I think you have to be 18. Oh, I think, well, maybe yeah. he came in there so strong. He just kind of yeah. more mature for your 15 year old self. I mean, I look like a baby, but. I don't think yeah. this guy cared. <laughs> He's like 50 bucks. 50 bucks. Well, that's a lot of money. So, back then. Yeah. Right. so Sorry. no, you're fine. So I went in there and yeah, in less than probably half an hour, I had the, the smiley face and it was shaded yellow and everything. Um, although when I was yellow. showing I was gonna... it, I was showing it to people like after I got it done you're and so... the smiley face was orange because it, you know, it was like all oh, the blood, blood and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, wow. so that's what? the first one I got. Second one I got when I was 18, all I wanted to do was go to Venice, California 
and visit. No really? joke. So wow. my friend and I went to, um, I, uh, it's the black and white tattoo shop on the boardwalk. Yeah, they're closed. I think it's they're closed. House of Ink? Shut down. I posted a picture actually on my Facebook page like oh, two weeks ago. Yeah, they're shut down. But anyways, on That's, the front of the That is where I got my second tattoo. Wow. And that one's on, that one's on my ankle. And it's, let's see if we can do this. There you go. What is that? So it's a little kind of, it's oh, a I red, like cross. a red gothic cross. Cross, I can see that. Sorry, the names, the names were, um, the, when, never mind. <gasps> All good. I love that. That's beautiful. And then the third one. How old were I you got, when you got that one? It's a, it's basically, I went in there and I wanted a, I'm a, I'm a Gemini. I'm a Gemini. So, yeah. So I wanted to get the Gemini logo, <laughs> but I wanted this one specifically because um, it also is the initials of my name, Isaac Irvin. So that's right. That's why, that's why I got it. Wow. So, um, you're a, you're a, you're a solid Gemini. I'm a, I'm a, Libra. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a psycho Gemini. <laughs> We're all psycho. We're all, we all get mad. We all have a good day. We all have a bad day. I'm tired of people yeah. trying to say Geminis have like so many personalities. Really? And you don't. You're yeah, not. Yeah. No, I do. No, 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 I do. <laughs> really? The crazy comes out. <laughs> Well, I hope it's a good crazy. Yeah, yeah, a always fun good. Crazy. Always fun and crazy. I've never for seen. Sure. Yeah, I've never seen you in a in a any other good mood. Any other mood. Um, what is okay? Here's here's a uh, going back to the music a little bit. What um, can you think of maybe the saddest lyric you've ever written? Yes. Um, let me dig through mentally on my, uh, and while you're digging, look for, well, I, I will tell you, there's, there's a Spanish song that I wrote and it's called Por Que, which is why, right? Um, and, and the lyrics start off, I mean, it's a sad song, um, about breakup, you know, breaking up and, um, relationships that have, you know, have split apart. Have and, and it's a, it's a... Yeah, so this one, you know, the Spanish lyrics go, Tu me dejaste sin piernas con que pararme. That's the opening Demasiado line. Demasiado legs, piernas, legs. Yep, yeah, and okay. it's essentially saying, it's, it's talking from the girl's perspective um saying you left me with no legs to stand on um and i think you know that's to me it was very powerful wow, when i that, wrote it um that's saying a and because in my mind i see it as like this song and whether or not anybody i don't even think anybody has uh ever asked me you know um about the lyrics like that but it's definitely made the first verse is, you know, from the perspective of the girl, and then the second verse is the perspective of the guy. And then uh, the chorus is, por que, por que, por que, why, 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 you know? Um, but yeah, I think, I think that opening line just, you know, it, it has a big kind of visual to me saying, you know, hey, everything was good, and now I have no legs. You know, yeah. like I can't even stand up for myself because of what happened. Torn and down. She's been completely chopped. You, you know, exactly. when they get kicked at the knees, you're, you're yep. slapping the, you're falling to, to the ground. That's very heavy. Is yeah. that, did you write that song out of um, your own personal relationship or? I think a culmination of all past, you know, I haven't been in too many relationships. Um, well, one, one, but it's, one, but it's, one but fall just that me. feeling, you know, that you get when something like that goes 
separates. Um, yeah. You definitely, I think when you go through that, you know, the easiest way to kind of push it out is, is writing it out. And just, you know, even now when I sing it, um, it, it definitely, it's like therapy, you know? And I feel like I wouldn't have been able to get through some of this stuff if I wouldn't have written it down and, and made it into a song. Yes, you know? yes, but it's sure. But now, even though, you know, there was a lot of pain um, that went along with the song, now it's more, I mean, the whole healing process and singing it and everything, now, it's more of an enjoyable piece of uh, material that I like to play and sing that I just connect with, you know, very well. I can understand that. Um, it is something, I mean, as a girl, especially, like when you become so crushed um, and you have no legs to stand on, that means a lot. That means you're there's nothing there behind yeah. you, for you and you, you've fallen so low that you've, you know you're buried and for a girl we really do say why like why did you do this to me and that's i mean psychologically speaking they will tell you don't ask the why part isn't yours to answer um but when we're young we don't go into learning about how to fall you know we're just pour out emotions hoping that somebody's going to love us as much as we're going to love back and to not yeah. have that, to have that, that love pulled out from under you, it, it's why, why have, I mean, why have you forsaken me? But, you know. So yeah, no, it definitely, it, it chops you down. And it's, yeah. it's tough. It's tough getting back up. Um, yes, it is. But you do always get, come back up. You know, and that's the good to part. Off, you have to dust off those boots. Hi, Ivan. <laughs> yeah, you have to dust off those boots. So in so dusting off your boots, do you happen to know what is the happiest lyric that um, you've ever written? And what inspired that? Ooh. Dang. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think. Um, yeah. I don't know why, but mushrooms should yeah, pop into so my head. Yeah, <laughs> so um, there's a song that I wrote back in 2014, I think, or 2015. And it, it starts off through the mists of time. Hold on. What was that? Let me, <laughs> I don't even remember my own lyrics. Um, wow. I'm all excited. I'm yeah, excited. so through the mist, let me let me see if I can just play it real quick. Ooh. See if I remember how to. Let's see. How nice. Let's see. With just one look, she froze my heart. I knew I loved her. Wow. That's, yeah, yeah. So I, it, it took me a minute to, I'm, I'm like, right now I'm, I'm so focused on all the new kind of stuff that I'm, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, working I mean, on that all the old stuff is like. <laughs> Sorry. But that's beautiful with one look, huh? Just one. Just one look. Did that actually happen? This song um, that was, I, I tend to write a lot of stuff where it's more generalized with a lot of experiences, if that had makes you, sense. Had you met Molly yet? No, this was a lot, this was, you said 2014, so that's... Oh, yeah. Actually, maybe I wrote this song before 2014. <laughs> I know... 
let's see. Did that happen to you when you met Molly? Did was it just one look and she froze your heart and you just knew No, it? so <laughs> this was I think this song was written before I actually uh fell in love with her. But I wrote her her own special song. Oh um, so you do have a love song that you've written for her. Oh yeah, yeah. I got I got plenty of love songs for her. <laughs> and my, my love song to her was uh, I couldn't get away without you here by my side that's the chorus oh so, yeah that one that's I actually precious. I recorded I actually my band challenger which was the 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 guy that lived across the street from PDP uh-huh um, where my earmuffs are <laughs> yep yep <laughs> where uh we used to play we used to play that song at our at our gigs a lot so Aww. i should bring that one back yes you should <laughs> all that love man i'm telling you bob marley <laughs> he's yeah, all right are you ready for the next question i am i'm gonna have to wrap it up gotta get yeah. back to work but yeah I let's have, do it i have one two Two. Ready? Perfect. Three words to describe yourself. <laughs> me, uh -huh. myself, and Isaac. <laughs> what? Me, myself, and Isaac? Come yeah. on. <laughs> so that used to be, I used to, before, you know, I was always trying to think of a clever way, like, what, what should I call myself? If I need a stage name or, a, you know, and I'm like, I'll just start calling myself me, myself, and Isaac. So I'm sticking with that one. <laughs> me, myself, and Isaac. Beanie, beanie, beachy, seize the day. Right? That's yeah. all. I mean, it kind of follows right along in. Beautiful. <laughs> well, you know what's beautiful about that is it, you're, you're, you're not selfishly taking care of me, myself, and Isaac. You are creating music and music places for people to go that are safe to take their courage out there and share their music with yeah. you and the rest of us so beautiful what a pr beautiful 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 job well done me myself and isaac <laughs> <laughs> last question are you ready let's do it what is the most important thing that you have learned so far Them and I, I mean Honestly, if I'm, I'm trying to boil it all down to like one main thought or theme and as in, in just a simple or as sim it's to me, it's as simple as be kind to everybody, no matter what, because you never know what one person is going through right. ever. You know, you you have no clue what mentally is going on in their head. Right. And if, you know, and I've been, in, and I'm sure you and many others have been in this situation where some bad experience with another person has happened or whatever. I, I have le come to learn that no matter what, either just blow it off or just reply with something nice and just move on, you know? I think if you add more fuel to the fire, it, it's just not, it's not a good thing, you know? Um, well, being mental nice health. to everyone is really, really important, especially when you, when you do recognize that you're not just being nice because that's what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to be mean to people, you're being nice because you don't recognize, like you said, you don't know, where they just what happened one step yeah. behind this person they might you know what i mean and and exactly and sometimes... and we've all been there as well you yeah know, everyone every day goes through with this yeah and the last thing you need is for some other human being to come up and be yelling a bunch of crap at you right. when they don't even know your situation right you know? so i've you know i've come to really just try to be a better human you know and that's 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 my uh, 
that's my final answer. <laughs> <laughs> you are a beautiful human. You're precious. I really, Thank you, really, really appreciate you taking this time with me and being Not a nice and honest and forthright. Yeah, you got, you got more I'm out of this time. interview than um, a lot of people that I've probably known personally for 15 plus years. Um, if, you know, if they watch this, they're going to learn a lot of new things about me, oh, <laughs> especially right. about my tattoos. I learned, a ton. <laughs> I learned a ton. I really appreciate it. And I'm so proud of you. And thank you, um, Anna. I just thank you so much, Isaac. Really, I've been wanting to do this for a very long time. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad it's we finally got it going. Lockdown, but yeah. I, courage, you know? Well, courage hopefully... and kindness go a long way. It does. It does. Thank you so much. I want to give you a big hug. Yeah, big oh, virtual hug. Virtual hug. Have a wonderful <laughs> Valentine's Day weekend. Thank you. Do it up. Um, I look forward to your music, and we are going to check Circle Back. Oh, no, terrible. We will check in with you for sure. Keep rocking and rolling. Don't lose it. And when you do lose it, call a friend. Awesome. Yep. That's what it's all about. <laughs> I'm here. You can call us. We'll hang out. <laughs> Thank you, Hannah. Appreciate it. Thank you, Isaac. Bye. Bye. Have a good Bye. one. Okay. You too. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.